Hello! Today we are going to take a look at the new DC3 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the free one that's appeared as part of the 40th anniversary update to the simulator. So we're going to take it from cold and dark and just walk through the procedure of starting the aircraft up. Then we'll take it for a quick circuit to see how it flies. You will see from looking outside it's actually really stunning. The modelling of the aircraft is absolutely wonderful. So, I think it was built by Aeroplane Heaven, so they've obviously licensed it over to Microsoft to include in the, the update to the simulator. So let's go and jump inside the aeroplane. You can see inside as well, the modelling is pretty spectacular. Um, looking at some of the assets inside, you can see, I think, these have appeared in other Aeroplane Heaven aeroplanes. <laughs> so obviously it's just good reuse of um, assets, I guess. Anyway. I'm going to follow a written set of instructions that I've been looking at over the last hour just to make sure that I know how to start the aeroplane up and there's a few little bugs here and there in the aeroplane that we'll come across and hopefully we'll go around them. So anyway, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to be, it's worth pointing out, I'm going to be scooting around the cockpit using the arrow keys on the keyboard and using the mouse to change my view quickly. If you are not used to doing that, well, good luck, because it makes it a lot easier. OK, so ground power goes to on. Then we go over to the cowl flaps and we click on these cylinders to turn them to the open position. OK, then we go to the left overhead panel and we turn on lights as required. So we're going to turn the position lights on. I think that's all we need to begin with, is just to inform people on the ground that we're getting ready to do something. Okay, so then we go down to the centre pedestal and we're going to set the levers ready for starting the engines. So the mixture levers have to go all the way forwards on the engines. The propeller condition levers have to go all the way forwards. And then the fuel shutoff valves, or the fuel selector valves I should say, have to be selected on each side of the pedestal. So the click spots seem to be the small metal uncovered triangles on the way around. So if we go left main for that one and right main for this one, the selectors will spin around to suit. OK, so I'm just looking further down my checklist. On the right overhead panel, we need to go and turn the fuel booster pumps to on. So that's that one and that one. So left and right fuel booster pumps, and you'll obviously you hear them whizzing away in the background. We need to make sure in the centre here that the master ignition is pushed in, which it is, and then we roll around the um, magnetos so they both say both. You heard uh, somebody shouting clear prop there in the background, that's FS Realistic that I've got running in the background. Okay, so... I'm going to scoot across into the middle here so we can see all these switches as we do this. To start each engine, we need to... Oh, before we get started, I almost forgot. We need to make sure that we crack open the throttles to about an inch of movement on the lever. Right, so on these levers, what we're going to do is prime the right engine, energise the right engine, there's a, a bug here, by the way. Did you see that that lever was not in the centre position? It was on left. So we've moved it down to right to energise. So the engines have a flywheel. So this is spinning up that flywheel using electrical power. And then when we say mesh, it introduces the flywheel to the rest of the engine and spins the engine up. Ready? So go. And if you go and look outside. Give it a few seconds. There it goes. When we do the left one, we'll actually go to the outside view because it's quite cool to watch it happen. So, same deal again. Engine, left primer. Energize. Left. Give it a few seconds. And then mesh the engine. Give it a few seconds. Very cool, isn't it? 
Okay, so now we have the engines running. You'll notice the energizer switch has gone back to the middle, the mesh switch has come off, and the primers have gone off all on their own. So we can turn off the boost pumps now. Okay, so engines are running. Okay, the next thing to take care of in the cockpit, we actually have to use a key combination to get there easily. We're going to use control and four, which is one of the built-in views. Underneath the center pedestal, there's a TW lever. This is the tailwheel lock. Okay, if it is pulled out, it is unlocked. If it is pushed, it is locked. So we need to ensure this is pulled out. And that means we can actually turn the aircraft on the ground while we're taxiing. During a takeoff run, if you had strong crosswinds or something, you can actually lock the tailwind, tail wheel, so the aeroplane won't cast uh, on the, the main wheels as you accelerate down the runway. Okay. Going back to the overhead view then, we're going to press F to centre back up on our cockpit view. We can now go and turn the batteries on. If you have any of your switches out of alignment, like your undercarriage lever on your controller, as soon as you turn the batteries on, you'll hear a warning klaxon. And it's just the, basically that you're, it's checking switch positions. And it's, it's noticed a misconfiguration in the cockpit. Okay, so then we can... Oh, the radios have come on automatically. That's good. Otherwise, we would have to click up here to make that happen. So at this point, we can go and taxi. So we're going to move the flaps to take off position so you can hear that pressurization system as the flaps move. I'm just going to move things around on my desk. I can't actually get to my joystick. I'm going to come off the parking brake and we're rolling. Oh, there's a truck in our way. We're about to run him over. Let's have a look outside while we're rolling. Actually, while we're taxiing out to the runway, let's go and turn some more of these lights on. So we want to put the landing lights on. I think that's all we need, to be honest. Don't really fit on the taxiway very well, do we? Sounds amazing. So we're coming out for runway 22 here at Booker Airfield, which is where I do a lot of my demonstration flights, to be honest. But it's a nice, straightforward airfield. The scenery, I've got custom scenery for it, and it's actually very reasonably priced, and it's quite accurate to the real place. For this sort of aeroplane, it's actually really handy. Okay, so... Let's, it's a little bit uphill here, which is why we rolled to a halt. So I'm just opening the engines ever so gently. So we'll try this takeoff roll without locking the tailwheel to see how much authority we have over direction. If you read the guidebook, then it says you need the boost pumps on, which we will do for the takeoff. So we'll go for it. So I am having to give it a boot full of right rudder. So obviously, the um, that wouldn't have been necessary. So I'm putting the flaps up pretty much immediately and the gear up. The boost pumps can now come off. We're watching the indicated airspeed climbing. The plane does move around a lot. You can see things vibrating, which is really cool. So this is not a fighter jet, so you have to be careful flying it. So we're going to turn back through reciprocal of our direction. It's worth pressing the D key in there's a flight simulator shortcut. You'll see there's an adjuster on the gyro compass, the Sperry compass here, because obviously it will fall out of touch with the magnetic compass over time. So 
So we're just going to fly around the airfield and come back and land again. So should we go and have a look outside? It looks stunning, doesn't it? Absolutely stunning. It moves around a lot in the wind. We have got some crosswinds going on today. So once you're in cruise, actually, you're supposed to move the mixtures back to auto lean, which we will do. We'll give ourselves a fair amount of run in to come back to the airfield. Keep an eye on that airspeed, we don't want to get too slow. You do need to use rudder to coordinate turns in this aircraft, it will skid horrendously otherwise. So let's get those wheels back down. There's the airfield in front of us. Flaps down. I've never actually landed this properly, so this is going to be a first for me. So we're just watching that airspeed. We'll be looking to lose airspeed and altitude on the approach but there's a fair amount of turbulence kicking us around which is not helpful, but it's giving you a good real-world approximation of how this thing behaves, and it's great fun. So probably a bit fast. We'll see how we go. We're still doing 85 knots. perfect landing by any means. Can we slide it around before we come off the end of the wrong way? So yeah obviously this needs a lot of practice to taxi properly and to to land. So I came in far too fast and should have really gone around. But it gives you a good idea of how it behaves. I've now locked the tailwheel, I think. Yeah, it's stuck at an angle. There we go. But yeah, that's the DC-3. It's fantastic, isn't it? I just, just the fact that that was so difficult to land makes me think that the flight model is good and it's not something you can just walk into and land, you know, on like butter immediately. It's going to take some learning procedures, distances, altitudes, speeds to keep it in the right ballpark. Okay, now we're back on the ground. Let's get the mixture rich again. As with any tail dragger, if you're worried about making a turn you can just give it some back stick when you apply thrust. Yeah, I've gone wide. <laughs> okay, we're going to park, or we'll, we'll avoid all of the um, bollards, go around the outside of them.
wonder what the ground handling is like. It's actually fine, isn't it? You just have to be careful because it's so big. <laughs> it doesn't really fit at this airfield. <laughs> okay, parking brakes on. To cut the engines, all, obviously all we have to do is pull the mixture back, which will starve them of fuel. And then we can turn off the fuel shutoff valves down here. Or we should be able to, he says. Famous last words. There we go. Is it, has it actually got a click spot for off? I don't think it has, you know. I can click everywhere except off, by the look of it. Anyway, like I said, there's a few little bugs with click spots in this. But otherwise, I think it's absolutely brilliant fun. So we can go and turn off some of this around the cockpit. Oh, we should have turned the ground power off, by the way. I, sh I completely missed that off the end of my checklist about removing the, um, the ground power. I was too excited to show you the aeroplane. Okay, so there you go. There's the DC-3 in Flight Simulator. Hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll make the checklist available in the notes of the video. Okay, see you again soon.